Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the US and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. I've missed you guys. I have been away uh, past the last week. I went to Houston, Texas for um, a Stampin' Up! convention called On Stage. It's something that they do um, every year and it was such a treat. So fun to see demonstrators uh, friends that I've known for the past 24 years um, and then meeting some new people. It was just a blast and we had a great time and we saw lots of new products, um, peaks of what's to come. We even have the new catalog in our hands. The new catalog begins um, in May, on May 1st. So stay tuned for all those uh, good things to come. And if you didn't catch my live yesterday, I went live yesterday too, because I had to share um, my color comparisons. I do a color comparison each year. So you'll want to check that out. It's um, on, on my YouTube channel. So you can go there um, after this is done and see the new colors, see how they compare to current and past colors, see the products that I ordered early uh, because I was an attendee of the onstage experience. I got to um, order early so you get to see a bunch of that stuff. Um, goodies that we got from Stampin' Up! So I hope that you um, watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. So welcome to all of you and a big welcome to Trisha and Lisa, my moderators. Uh, I'm thinking that they're here today. I don't know. It's been just a whirlwind the last week um, and I don't remember if they said they could come or not. So I hope they're here with us. Um, Trisha Josephs is my moderator on YouTube and Lisa Marshall is my moderator on Facebook. If you have questions, you can reach out to them. Tag them on YouTube by typing the at sign first and then um, Trisha and it'll bring up her name. You can click on it and she'll see her name highlighted so she can get to your question faster. With Lisa, you can tag her like you normally would on Facebook. All right, it is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 at 11 a.m. And I'm seeing from the comments, it's so fun to read you guys' comments before the live begins. And I don't, I read them during too, but not very well. I get distracted easily. But before the live began, I was seeing reports of good weather in most places. Um, so that's always wonderful, sunshiny weather. Yay. All right, so if this is your first time watching a live, I would love for you to comment. Um, I invite you all to like, give the thumbs up, um, comment as we go. Um, that gets you entered into prize drawings and then subscribe if you haven't done so already. This is my website, stampyourartout.com. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my blog post because I share often and I share lots of fun, creative ideas. So I hope that you tune in. In this video, Today, I'm going to actually share two versions of the same type of card. It's called a tucked insert fun fold card. And the reason why I created the first one is because I needed some cards that would hold a ribbon um, that I could send to my team members who were attending on stage. And so I came up with this idea and I'm going to share that one with you first. And then um, hopefully we'll have time to share the second one as well. It's using, both of them are using online exclusive paper, which means they're not in a publication, but they just re were released recently in the online store. You can go to um, my website, click on shop, and you can see all of this fun stuff. Everything that's current is in the online store. Not everything that's current is in the publications like the catalogs, but um, the catalogs are great to have in your hands. It's fun to kind of sit on a couch and relax and all that stuff and look through catalogs. The new catalog again is releasing May 1st, but again, everything will be available in the online store. So these online exclusives, again, not in publications, but they are gorgeous and I have to share them with you. Uh, a little latte paper and flowering zinnias papers are what we're gonna be focusing in on. I didn't get the sweets. They actually have sweets that go with them too. And I did not get, oh my gosh, Procrastination is having a blizzard. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Western New York. Okay, not everybody's sunny. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's March. We should not be having blizzards anymore. Uh, so yes, so I didn't get the sweets because I couldn't buy everything, right? We can never buy everything unless we're super, super duper rich. Um, but I paired these items up with other stamp sets that I had in my repertoire. And I'm going to be showing you these cards. So let's get moving on to the first one. Let me show you. I'm going to show you this one um, on my PDF that you're going to be able to print off. You can take a screenshot, sh uh, screenshot right now, but you don't need to. You can wait until the blog post goes live pretty soon after the live is done, and then you can uh, just download it. But let's take a peek at that. So this is what the card is 
going to look like. Um, I'm going to show you three versions that I have done and then we'll walk through one. Uh, and then you can see the um, measurements are there, the supplies are there. Uh, tucked insert fun fold card. I'm sure some of you have seen this style of fun fold before. It's very easy. And these flowers that are in this zinnia paper is perfect for this type of card. So, all right. Oh, it's cold in Ohio too? Oh, you guys. Well, you know what? I don't know what the temperature here is in Minnesota. I just know that the sun is shining and that makes me happy. I haven't gone outside yet. Let's go down to the desktop and let's start creating. So for this card, you're going to need 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, now, oops, hang on, I'm touching the wrong screen. Now you can, um, you know, reconvert the measurements and make it work with eight and a half by 11. But I encourage you to get 12 by 12 basic white. It's great for a lot of projects. It divides easily into, you know, measurements. So uh, 12 by 12 inches is divisible by four, by three, by six, by two, you know what I mean? So it's a really great size cardstock to work with when you're looking for layers. We are going to cut though this layer at four and a quarter inches wide because we want it to fit the average size US card um, for Stampin' Up, which is the four and a quarter by five and a half, right? Fits into the medium envelopes. Then we're gonna score and we're gonna score in from one end at four and a quarter, but it's gonna be slightly more. So we're gonna go beyond the four and a quarter mark, one little mark on our trimmer. Um, let me zoom in so you can see where that's at. It's actually four and five sixteenths. So here's four and a quarter, here's four and five sixteenths. So it's one little mark beyond. And we're gonna use our light blade and score there. And then we're gonna flip it in the other direction and we're gonna score at three and a quarter inches. This is our card base that we need. You both, uh, both of these fold in like that. Now, right now, it's not four and a quarter by five and a half, is it? It's more like a square, but we're gonna have a little piece up here that makes it a little bit longer. Let's grab our bone folder and do a little bit of creasing. I have my bone folder connected to a tag. <laughs> we're going to add a piece of designer paper before we do any punching, because you're gonna, if you looked at the pictures, you're gonna realize that we have to punch a hole in this little section here to add our um, piece that sticks up. So let's take and add our layer. Oh, let me introduce you to the paper. The Zinnia's paper. It's 22 degrees in Ramsey. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy's here. Great, thanks. I appreciate that. Or did you just look on your weather app? 22 degrees in Ramsey, Minnesota feels like nine. I guess it's cold, but it's sunny. Okay, we have this beautiful paper again, flowering Zinnia's. Um, front side, back side, or what, however you want to call it, side A, side B, okay? Lots of beautiful, bright colors. I was able to crank out, because I had to cut flowers from these, and you can get 15 from each sheet. There's two of everything, by the way. I could get 15 from each sheet, so I was able to create 30 cards from this one pack, all right? So we're gonna take the pieces, and I'm just gonna set that there. Put this aside. We're going to take the pieces that are already pre-cut and ready to go. I have for us this pink layer, this green layer, these green strips which are actually the back side of this paper. We have a square piece and we have um, a cut out flower. It's already fussy cut out. I used my paper scissors, my paper snips in order to do that. The measurements for these pieces, this is um, four by three four by four, three quarters by four, three quarters by four. And this one is just under two and a half inches by four. So they're all four inches wide. We're gonna start with this one. We wanna make sure that the leaves are going upwards, like the plant is going upwards, right? We're gonna add that with plenty of adhes adhesive because we wanna make sure that we, um, when we punch our hole, that portions of this still stick. Thank you so much. Yay, and the paper is so beautiful. I agree with you, Hildy. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add that right here. Now what we wanna do is do a punch, okay? So if you have not seen my other video where I showed you how to do, um, how, how to find the middle measurements of your punches, um, I'll probably need to post that again, but it's basically using post-it notes and um, sheets to stick the post-it notes on. You know what, let's just walk through it really quick. We can do that. 
I need a post-it note though. Um, oh shoot. Okay, we'll just use this one. <laughs> it's quite simple, you guys. Okay, so you take your post-it note. These are all <laughs> post-it notes that I put on the backs of my cards. And you make sure to include the sticky end. You punch your circle. Oops. Oh, see, Rachel likes to give all these tips and ideas and that slows her down in the video. Okay, then <laughs> you grab like a piece of thin paper and we're gonna fold this. We're gonna fold this in half this way so that the sticky end is all on one side. Fold your circle in half. Add that edge, that folded edge, to the edge of your white thin paper. You're going to bring your um, piece into your punch like this and that's going to create your half inch. Now if you put it on here straight you're going to use the sides of this small thin paper. So you want to have it small enough where you can see the straight sides and you want it to be rectangular or square and you're going to put it in like this. Now you can see it's crooked right now, right? It's crooked. So you have to straighten it out and make sure that your sides are, sorry, your sides are parallel on each side, right? They're parallel to the edges of your punch. And then you mark one, two with a Sharpie pen. Then what you do is you pull it out and you fold it this way instead so that the um, lines of your punched piece are still in alignment with the edge of your paper and everything's squared that way. Then you put it inside your punch again and you use the edges of the paper to make sure that they're parallel to the edges of your punch and then you mark up and down. And it's a pretty accurate way to do it. Okay, so now that that's done, <laughs> we're gonna move on. I've got my punch marked so I have the halfway point. And if you wanna guess, you can do that too. We're gonna go into the card so that we have um, our punch pressed all the way in and then we're gonna come back about an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So we're not gonna go all the way in, just part way almost to that so that the punch is almost all the way in. Does that make sense? And you can see how I'm lining up those little marks on my punch with the actual marks, I'm sorry, which, with the actual score line of my card. And now I can punch and I saved this piece and you'll see why in just a minute. So now that we have that done and you folded it down, you can see it's perfectly halfway through. It's pretty awesome. All right, this piece comes up like this next, and this is where we're going to add our um, flower because we want to have our flower sitting in here. We cut it out. Now, the flowers aren't all equal. If you have leaves that are going opposite of each other, like one here and one here, it's not going to fit in this section. That leaf is going to be in the way. So you want to make sure that you have um, all your leaves, all your full trailing leaves, on the bottom third of your flower so that the top portion can be inserted into this circle here. Now before we add that flower, it's nice to pop it up a bit. So we're gonna take a sm slightly smaller punch. We're gonna go with the one and three quarter inch circle punch and add one of those right here. So what I did is I just kind of laid it down on my paper and I have to push something here. We're gonna have issues, sorry. I'm gonna grab my multi-purpose liquid glue it's still not working. That's okay. Hopefully you guys can see me and I'm not having any technical issues. Um, I put it into this little precision tip bottle, which I like to do here. And we're gonna lay this down and we're gonna put our adhesive onto the circle area. And you can kind of, if I do a dark piece behind here, can you kind of see where that circle kind of trails through behind? You can see a shadow of it. So if it helps, you can put dark paper underneath so that you know where you're adding your glue. It's not coming, there we go, now it's coming out. And that kind of completes that circle, okay? Then you can pull that away. You can lay this down so it's centered and you see about the same amount all the way around. You see an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks, Tina. <laughs> oh, you're having some trouble on YouTube, Darlene? I hope, oh good, my little technical thing went away. So I hope it's okay, sorry. 
Okay, so now that you've got that down, now we can add this piece here and we're gonna add that with a dimensional. Now you can certainly add this straight on if you want to, but I think it's fun to have the main part of your card popped up a bit. And even though we are going to press this down on top of it, the dimensional in the center behind the middle of the flower is not going to cause any issues really. So we're just gonna add that right to the center. That'll give it some lift and some shadow. And then we'll add that, making sure our leaves are underneath this edge. It has to be underneath that edge there. All right. Oh, it's looking good. Now, if you want to here, you can have like um, a larger piece of paper, but watch what happens. It gets kind of distracting at the top here. So I wanted less paper there. I wanted on this type of card, I wanted it to be down a little further. So I decided to use that piece that is two and three eighths inches high. We're going to add some seal adhesive behind the top. You can tell it's the top because the flowers are going upward, right? Oh, good. Some of you are saying it's fine on YouTube. We're going to add those two together. They're great contrasting colors. Red and green are opposite of each other on the um, color wheel. So they vibrate. They make each other pop even more, even though these colors are super bright, right? So now we'll go like this and add some adhesive on the back side and add that about an eighth of an inch from the bottom here. This top one on my cards that I sent out to my team, I'm going to show you what I did here, okay? Just in case some of you would like to do something similar. I added, oops, we're not putting adhesive on that side. That's the side that's going to show. We're putting, I just added a thin line of adhesive with my fine my precision tip glue bottle. Then I took some Hermafix transfer tape. It's a tape that Stampin' Up! used to carry back in the day. And I just put a little thin line of it right there. You can find that in my favorite extras on my website. Um, it's Herma transfer or Herma repositionable tape, I think is what they call it now. And I just added some right there. And then I stuck it down on the top, about an eighth of an inch on all three sides here okay so that's my even border all the way around let that dry and you'll see why in a minute okay now let's grab the inside of the card and add this layer now i made this layer four by four but if you're not worried about using up your designer paper you can certainly make this a sixteenth of an inch longer because four by four you can see remember we kind of tr uh, we did our score line a little bit further in so there's a slightly bigger gap on either this side or this side I'm just gonna leave it on that side we're gonna add that with seal or multi-purpose liquid glue whatever your choice is Sh figure out how you want your um, flowers to look because this is the down part of the card and this is the up okay there it's coming together now we need our ribbon so we're going to grab our ribbon and we're going to start with it on this side. We're going to fold this down and tie our ribbon. Now if you are somebody that needs to have your ribbon adhered first and then you tie it, you can certainly do that. I, um, this finger is very talented. It helps to hold my ribbon in place when I'm doing my knots. So I don't worry too much about that, but um, I understand. I understand when people need that extra little help or somebody's finger, you know, like a friend's hand or whatever to hold it. We're now going to shift this because I didn't adhere the ribbon. We're going to shift it by curving our card a bit and having that come over to one side. We're going to flip it up. We're going to shift that so it's lined up with the bottom of that strip. And then we'll use our paper snips that I've marked with a ribbon because it's my sharp one. And we'll go like this. Okay. All right. Some of you are asking about stuff from on stage. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for answering that. Okay, good. I'm glad you caught that question. There's uh, the catalog is so beautiful, you guys. You're going to love it. It's laid out a lot differently, though, so it's, it's going to take some getting used to for those of us that rely on the catalog. Um, but there's some great resources in there, including the color wheel, which is what I think I thought that conversation was about, right? All right, so now we've got the main parts of our card done. We just need to add some stamping pieces. And for that, I've got a little strip of basic white cardstock, which is, what was it? Two, let's see, three inches. Three inches by a half of an inch. 
and I'm using a third punch now. So we've used the two inch punch, the one and three quarter inch punch, and now we're bringing in the banners pick a punch. I wouldn't say that this one is necessarily absolutely needed, like you don't have to have this punch, but it's, um, it's handy. You might as well invest in all the punches. Okay, so I've used the channel here. My paper is slightly bigger than a half of an inch, I guess, because it's not laying down straight. But I've stuck it in there and I'm looking at the back to make sure it's in there, um, centered. And we'll punch. And now we've got our little strip here ready to stamp on. Because we're using photopolymer stamps and they're clear, we are able to see through them. On the cards that I made for my team members, I did not want it to say, I'm so happy you were born. <laughs> Instead, I mean, that's nice to say, but it's more like a baby card sentiment, right? Instead, I took and masked off the you were born with some tape. So we covered that up, brought in some Mossy Meadow ink, and we inked it up. You can also just ink the stamp up on the side, on the edge of the block, or you can go like this and get real messy, and then pull that tape off, throw it in the garbage, where it's not, oh, it's not, the garbage is not full. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to stick it on something else and then wrap it in a tissue because it has ink on it. All right, so now we can take and stamp this onto our card, right, our card piece right there. I'm so happy. And this I just added with seal adhesive. And I think on the ones that I sent to my team, oh yeah, I put them down here. Okay. So I just added it in this space here and I brought the left edge all the way over to the left edge of the card. Not the left edge of the paper, of the designer paper, but the left edge of the card. So right here. And that's pretty much what I did. Then I inserted, so I took up my printer and I printed out what I wanted to say. And this is what the finished version looks like. So see, now there's a ribbon that I tucked up and in there. And this ribbon has like this little thing that peel off. So even if there was some adhesive that got on here, it's okay because um, it, it's going to peel off anyway. So that was stuck up here with the repositionable tape that held it down. And then on the inside, I had a little message that I added in there. I'm so happy that you are attending on stage. It's going to be so much fun. So that was my little card that I sent out to my team members. Here's a couple of other versions of that card. Um, let's take a peek at them. I ran out of this paper for using for the front here because I needed the back side for those diagonal green strips, right? These guys here. So instead, I used the back side of some other paper in the pack to kind of have a different green look there. And, oh, and also I put the words on the top here instead of down here. So you can lay it out differently. All right, now let's go over to this way. And I'm so sorry, Marsha. She's talking about the ads on YouTube. Yes, I know there are ads on YouTube and there's something that we kind of have to just deal with now. <laughs> I have no choice. They have to be in there. Um, but look at the beautiful uh, papers that you can choose to have on the inside of your card. Uh, so this is one design and this is the design I used on the other ones, right? I think I had that one on this one too, yep. So lots of fun with making those cards. What did I do with that extra circle that I punched out? Well, let's bring that over. So then I took my yay stamp. There's a yay that's in that stamp set. So here is the one. I'm so happy. Here's the yay. This is from the stamp set called Happy Labels. Sentiment stamp sets are so fun. They're, they're awesome to add to your arsenal. <laughs> we'll stamp that there. Now I have these butterfly stickers that are my logo, butterfly. And so I did add that, but you could totally do it like this. Then you add it to another layer if you want to. Put those where they're safe and they're not gonna get any ink on them. And then I took my crocodile punch, which you can also find in the extras, my favorite extras, because we don't sell um, little hole punches like this. But I took my crocodile punch and I went through this layer, the layer behind it, and I also had a third layer and these crocodile punches are awesome for punching. So I just punched right through the top like that. And after, um, after I had this, I'm sorry, actually I had two layers together. 
Then I added my third layer on the back and I used the piercing end of my take your pick tool to re-emphasize the hole. And I punched that hole again, used some of this beautiful twine that is leaving us because it's from Departing Colors. The 2022 through 24 in colors, Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, and Tahitian Tide, which I used up on all my team uh, gifts, is leaving. Um, so you'll want to get your hands on that. I did use the Parakeet Party in my sample here, and here is what their gifts look like for that. So if you're interested, you can do some little tags, add them to whatever you want if you're going to make little tags with your extra circle. On the back side, I did put a note. I just punched out the same size circle, a two inch. This circle comes from the Reach for the Stars dies, and there's one that measures two and an eighth inches in diameter. So if you wanted to recreate the tag idea, you could do that with, uh, with dies and with the two inch circle punches. So yeah, that's how I made that. Let's bring in a different set of designer paper. And I don't have it all <laughs> because, oh boy, did I love this stuff too. I used it up and I didn't buy addition. I only bought one pack. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. I'm glad you like that gift idea. Oh, and did you notice, I don't think I flipped it over, but I had um, Tamara Davis etch my team names, all, my, all the name, uh, first names of my team members onto the other side of the bone folder. So we all have personalized bone folders with a butterfly. Okay, so this is the remainder of my paper, you guys. I don't have a ton of it left. I used it, but I have enough where we can play around with it, okay? So that is the one called a little latte. So let's grab another card base. Let's see how fast we can whip through this. Here we go, we have it already folded. We're gonna add our front layer, our top layer. And that is this one, which is so cute. It's got little splotches of spilled coffee on it. And that one's going to get add with our, added with our seal adhesive. And that gets added to the top front of our card, right in this spot here. Take our two inch circle punch, line it up, push it all the way in, pull it back about an eighth of an inch, punch, you can save that to make a tag. <laughs> Maybe put that on like a little coffee bag uh, or coffee um, like grounds or something. I don't know. Um, I don't I don't drink coffee. I don't know what all that stuff is called. <laughs> I just love this paper though. It's so cool. Okay, on the on this portion here, we're gonna add a punch circle like we did before. And again, you can just add your piece directly if you want to. This is one of the um, cups, aerial view of the cup from one of the sheets. It looks like this. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, so I cut one of those out, but I want it to pop up a bit. So I'm going to make use of uh, my, let's see, do I have some dark paper? We'll just put it over the top of this so you can see. Again, you can see the outline of the circle underneath here. Yes, you can. Oh, good. The camera worked well. We're going to add that in that zone, that little area there and lay that down so we have an eighth of an inch showing in that half circle little section and we have something sticky there but it doesn't matter because we're going to cover it up grab some dimensionals where did they go off to <laughs> oh here they are okay we need a dimensional which is our adhesive that pops things up and creates shadow and we have the handle of our cup so let's take a peek at that. If we have the handle of, our, handle of our cup this way, it's not going to shut. The card won't shut. So you sort of have to have that handle angled down so that it dips right below this level, just like we did with the leaves, okay? So the heart is not gonna be perfectly straight up and down. We'll just have to deal with it. Thanks, Melanie. She watched the color comparison video. Yay! <laughs> Some of you are like horrified that I don't drink coffee. Tina, I'm glad that you like your coffee. I just, I can't drink it. I can't. There's something about the taste. I don't know how you guys get past the taste. <laughs> All right, here's the layer that goes on the front. We'll add some seal right across there. And then we'll take our swirly whirly paper. And I kind of like this side. This is fun stuff, you guys. Look at the back sides of these papers too. So 
coffee beans, little coffee beans, yay. Let's add that below with some extra seal adhesive. That's gonna go down here with an eighth of an inch all the way around. Oops, make sure it's centered. And then we need some of this at the top because we're not attaching a ribbon or anything tucked under there. We can just go like this. But if you want to add something, that would be a great way to do it, right? Just do the temporary adhesive and a little bit of glue just along the top line. Now we open it up all the way and we add our other sheet, which is four by four to make the most use of our designer paper, or you could make it four and a sixteenth by four. Okay, and we'll lay that there so that this heart is more upward because it is obviously, um, actually we could have turned it the other way. We could have turned it this way and both of them would have looked upward. That's okay, it's aerial view. Okay, on the inside of our card, we are going to stamp with Ringed with Nature. The Ringed with Nature stamp set is the one that I decided to pull in to go with this paper because again, I did not buy the entire suite um, of a little latte or the flowering zinnias. I am so sorry, I just can't get it all, right? Maybe I'll buy them, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I grabbed these two images here. Those sentiments are already mounted. Let's grab our early espresso ink pad. So many different coffees, not all are the same taste. Um, true, except when you have a milk allergy, you can't really, you know, liven up coffee too much in, without milk, right? So I can't do milk. I just, I can't make it and I can't do sugars. <laughs> Oh good, someone else that hates coffee. <laughs> Tracy just shouted out. Okay, we're gonna put this image on the inside because coffee is all about love and warmth, except for those of us that don't eat, drink it, but I mean, we still think of, I love the smell of coffee, don't get me wrong. I could sit in a coffee house all day long. Um, but I just, I don't like the taste. Let's punch this little piece. This piece measures, and now I'm gonna bring you over to my other sheet here, because I have two of them. I have two of them to offer you guys, okay? So let's do this, whoops. Taking just a slight break, now you can see the insides and the outsides of three versions of this card. Actually, there's six versions if you take a peek at that fourth photo. So this piece measures one inch by two and five eighths inches. This is a slightly different basic white um, sentiment piece, okay? Both of these sheets will be downloadable. So you have two today. Yay. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the desktop. And let's, let's punch this one. Center it into our punch, the channel of our punch. Flip it over. Oh, see? That one is not centered straight. It's probably because, again, I cut it a little wider than one inch. Now let's take a peek. Oh, that looks good. Right? Okay. Punch it down. This one's going to get stamped in the opposite direction. So this is going to come from the right side of the card. Oh yeah, and I forgot. My stamp set is a little shallow. Can you tell from how it got inked up? Look at that. The ink is like all over. If that happens to you guys, let Stampin' Up! know. I have not had a chance to call them on this, but um, sometimes the photopolymer stamps don't get... Um, developed with a lot of distance and this one does not have a lot of distance so we are just going to tap very lightly there we go and stamp that down off to the left and I kind of have it too far off to the left so let's do that again and let's put that over here a bit there we go okay close that up on the front of the card we're gonna add a faux ribbon so a little piece here that looks like it could be ribbon, but it's not because we don't have this exact looking ribbon. It's just cardstock. So we've got our strip there. We'll add that about an inch off the uh, edge, the edge of the front flap. Okay, so that's there. And then we're going to add this with dimensionals oops which side this is the side okay one two we're gonna grab two dimensionals for that one and we're going to lay that down coming in from this side so that it the ribbon strip kind of goes through the center of that 
V part of the banner. Now it looks a little unbalanced still because we're missing um, something in this space. So let's bring in some coffee colored sequins. <laughs> I love these. They're so pretty. They're called, what are they called? They're called the Neutrals Adhesive Back Sequins. I love this. You guys are giving me ideas for how to try coffee. Oh, geez. And then you want to get me addicted to coffee? <laughs> I used up all of my dark brown ones except for these four, and I just need two of them. One on the top, one on the bottom. All right, there's that. And that's how the finished card looks. So we have... It opened like that, and there's the love and warmth, and you can write your message on the inside. Here is another version of that card. Look at, isn't that fun paper? Oh, I love that one. Pe uh, petal pink and the light, 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 early espresso-y color. Um, this is another one. So all the coffee cups give each card a slightly unique look. There's one with coffee cups on the inside. A big shout out to my assistant, Teresa Glow, who helped me to complete these. There's another one. And the strips, do you notice? So Lost Lagoon, uh, Calypso Coral, and Lemon Lolly. Those are the colors that you see in this plaid paper and also in the cups. So every cup, we looked at the cup color and that's what we put for the strips, the little faux ribbon strips. So here we have Lemon Lolly on the outside, Lemon Lolly, and here's the Lost Lagoon and the inside of that one. Super cool. And here are the three colors of cardstock. They look different when they're not on the card, don't they? <laughs> All right. I love it. You guys keep telling me about the coffee. I am going to try coffee when I want to, not today. <laughs> oh, xylitol. Okay. Good idea, Virginia. That uh, takes the uh, granulated sugar idea out of it. All right. Good to know. Hmm. All right. I'm going to look at some of you guys' suggestions and I might, I might, I just, I don't want to be one of those people. My husband, I love him, but he is he drinks coffee like all the time now. He just, we went away on one of the incentive trips and he came back loving coffee and he has to have coffee every day. And I don't want to have to be like <laughs> relying on coffee every day. All right. New papers. New papers, you guys. I showed them to you the other day, uh, yesterday in my little preview thing, but I thought we would play. We have a few minutes and this is a quick card. So here are all the different papers that you can get in this new pack. It is called, and it won't be available until May 1st for those of you that aren't demonstrators, but it's called Unbounded Beauty Designer Paper, Berry Burst, Calypso Coral, Peach Pie, a new color, uh, Petunia Pop, a new color, Pretty in Pink, yes, it came back as a new in color, Pretty Peacock, Shy Shamrock, a new color, and Summer Splash, a new color. See if you can figure out what's what. If you didn't watch the video yesterday or you haven't been up on what's being posted from all of us crazy demonstrators who went to on stage, then you may not know the new colors yet. It is a teaser, Marjorie. <laughs> yes. And then these are called ephemera packs. And this one has sentiment strips in it. And the other one has flowers. And there's two sheets of four different kinds. And they fall out easily. So it's going to be fun to try to pick which one we want to use here. I'm just going to put this one at the top because it's like little strips and it might be the easiest one to work with. So we have that. And we also have this flower one. Oh, let's see if we can pull it out of here. I, I'm keeping them in the cardboard and the cellophane because I don't want all these pieces to fall yet. I don't have a place for them yet in my room. But again, we have two sheets of all four designs here. Lots of pretty stuff. So I was looking through these flowers and I said, ooh, that one looks like it could work except it has flower, uh, leaves that are opposite that won't really pop up too well in the middle uh, or the top portion of the card, right? So then I went on to this sheet and I went, mm, that could work, but it's not really circular, but I could use that without the circle punch behind it. Um, I could use something like a black and white and color it in. Um, so basically you want to find something that would fit in that two inch circle 
space, right? And so I thought, well, this one or this one would work really well. And I, I know that this one seems a little more plain Jane, but we can take and spice it up. So I've grabbed that one. I have my card base. I already have like a ton of these still to go. So that one will work here. We're gonna put some designer, designer paper on the top. And I thought this was kind of fun. So let's go ahead and cut that one first. We're just gonna go for it, you guys. I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I sort of looked at the paper and the flowers beforehand, but I really honestly don't know after this piece what we're doing from here. I just know that I want the flower to be separate looking and I don't want to have a purple right next to it. So we're doing a green on the top of the card right there. Okay, that'll really make the purple part pop a bit. Oh, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I could cut the leaves off on the side, Melanie, but then I wouldn't have that same... Um, white border all the way around you'd be able to see kind of a indentation there and I I mean yeah you could but I didn't okay now we need a punched white oops do I not have some extra white paper I do not let me grab some extra white oh going in my craft room you guys here it is there we go oh I have it over there <laughs> it's off to the side okay we need to punch out a one and three quarter inch circle. Okay, we have that. And we're going to adhere this piece to this piece. Ooh, I like that though. That's cool. Uh, okay, just keep going, Rachel. Keep going, don't analyze. This is just a spur of the moment. Let's see what we can create kind of card. We're gonna lay that on the top. We have to have that laying down first. Then we take our two inch circle punch. We bring it into the card, pull it back about an eighth of an inch. Punch, save that for a tag. <laughs> Lay this down against something dark. We'll go like that and we'll add our... <laughs> a long time ago, I used to mark all the things that I got free with host rewards. Host free item. I got that free a long time ago. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. It helped because I'd go to a party, I'd do a party at someone's house and I'd say, and you can get things free if your party reaches $150 in sales or more. Yep. So there's that. Okay. Let's add our flower because that way we can kind of work with it here. Oh, maybe I should have done. No, because the flower has to stand out. It was good that we had white. Let's add our flower with a dimensional and we'll pop it off the page like that. Does that sheet... Where's that sheet of flowers? Oh, look, this sheet has some summer splash leaves. Look at that, some summer splash leaves. I may have to use that. Oh, this one's better. <laughs> okay, hang on. So now we grab our paper snips and let's see what we can do here that's creative. We're gonna cut right here and we're gonna separate these. They're not gonna have the same distance of white all the way around them, but they do still kinda have a white border, right? Okay, this one's gonna get tucked under like that. <gasps> we're getting creative, you guys. Oh, this is fun. Let's add our glue. Put that in my glue holder so it the glue stays down to the surface. Add that there. Let's see how this one will look. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, now we're now we're fancying up the flower a bit. Okay. <laughs> I love the ephemera pack too. I am just in love with all of these little ephemera packs that they have introduced. Oh, we're not gonna be able to see that one. Here, we'll put it right there. Oh, now the little stem is sticking out. Okay, that's probably good. So now we have that and we have that. We need something down here that has a little bit of purple. Let's grab that paper. Let's look at this side too. Um, could we do that down there? Is that too much? That's kind of pretty, isn't it? We want to have something a little louder because it's further away. We could do this one. 
All right, so do we do the all, no, petunia, I think we need to have more color. I'm gonna go with this one. So we're gonna trim that up. We're using that same sheet and we're gonna trim a, let's trim a piece that's a little bit bigger. Do we have to have a border? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's trim it to two and three eighths again. We'll keep all measurements the same. So, there we go. I think we'll do that. Now this side, we use that side. <laughs> ah, isn't this fun, you guys? I don't do this create on the spur of the moment stuff. Oh, we need a little strip at the top. So let's use, I think this would be a good border piece, don't you? That would be kind of fun. Or, or, <laughs> or we could do this side again. Too busy? Too busy. What about this one? I like that one. Let's do that one. I love Summer Splash. I think Summer Splash is um, my new favorite color, you guys. I know Petunia Pop was the one that was voted most popular when we were at on stage, but Summer Splash came in at a second. It's kind of like a light version of Bermuda Bay. Um, I, it's my favorite because I do love greens, you guys, but I love the green blue combo more so than I like a true green. I like light greens. I like very summery looking greens. And then I like the aqua kind of greens too. So this would be my favorite next. And then Shy Shamrock is more on the green side. Okay, let's flip this over. Did we decide what um, part is peeking out? Is it gonna be that one or this one? I think it has to be that way. Okay, so we'll go like this. We'll add our green strip, just a hint of it peeking out, flip it over. We could have gone real contrasting and used the peach color there, but I didn't see any peach. Oh, there's a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna get added here. And this little strip will get added at the top to balance out color. And then we just need something on the inside and really that can be anything we want. We could go with this one. Um, what's another one that works well? This one I think goes really well, although it's not as, or we could just do something that's similar to that first sheet. Where's the first sheet? Or we could do the first sheet again, stick with all, all the same. So I don't know. Maybe I stick with the same. Let's just go with the strip. Let's do that. Okay, so we'll add that. It's not like I have, you know, 30 of these flowers here. So I can really only make two of the same ones with that one ephemera pack. So it's okay if we stick with the same paper. We're not, we're not mass producing this time. Okay, and that's gonna go on the inside. And there's gotta be a direction to this. Not really. We'll put it this way. I don't think there's a direction. I think it's an aerial view. So there's that. I'm gonna grab an embellishment. I keep my embellishments in these cases here. I think we're gonna use the iridescent rhinestones, you guys. Oops, oops, oops. I put it down on my inked piece of tape over here. <laughs> we'll grab these and we'll use our take your pick tool and put a large, a medium, and a small right up in there. See, that's how we make it fancier. Now our flower is not dull and boring. <laughs> We need a sentiment strip. Let's whisk these away. All these papers can go over here in a safe spot. And we'll take out our sentiment strips and take a peek at what we got here. Love you forever, that would stand out. Hmm, I think that would be a good one. We'll stick that one on. And we'll put it up with dimensionals. You guys, we just made an instant card. 
The ephemera packs are so amazing. You can get cards and envelope packs too. They have them. Um, we'll just set that right. Eh, maybe we'll put it down here and wrap a ribbon around it. Balanced underneath the flower. Where's that ribbon? Where's that ribbon? Here it is. Oh, I'm going to use the other ribbon. <laughs> I'm going to use this one because it matches the iridescent rhinestones. And it has kind of a purplish sheen to it when it's uh, added to a card. Let's find our ribbon scissors. And we'll make our knot go off to this side over here. <laughs> Beautiful card. Those colors make me happy. They make me happy too, Tina. Um, it's a really nice collection of colors, the new in color set. Bright and cheerful, very spring-like. Um, all right, and we'll just shift that over here. So we did make a third card. <laughs> it's kind of far away, you guys, probably because I was showing you off the, the paper. Sorry about that. In color ribbon, yes, Melanie. That's way over on that side of the room, though. I'd have to disappear. I didn't bring that over here. We could have used any of the in color ribbons. That probably would look better um, because it would show off better. This one's kind of hidden on the card. I may have to do that. Anyways, that is what we came up with. On the spur of the moment, we created... Ah! Cards are fun. Card making is a blast. <laughs> we didn't have to have dies for this either. No dies. How nice is that? I mean, I love dies, but if you're watching and you're a beginning crafter, this is so doable. Join our paper crafting madness that we all are in. <laughs> Be one of us. It's so much fun to create cards and share them with people, share them with your loved ones. Where did my, oh, here they are. Okay, let's bring them all out here. We have created lots. Well, we created three. And then I showed you how to create the tag. There's the tag. We'll just lay them all out so you can see them all. <laughs> all right, so moving on. What else do I need to tell you about? I told you about on stage, I told you about um, new products, the video that I just did, online exclusives that I just featured. Remember to shop um, the online exclusives area so that you can see things that are not in publications. Uh, let's just take a peek at that really quick. I'll just give you a quick little tiny tutorial on where to find that. Pull this up, bring you over to my computer. Okay, so we're on. You can either go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and clip, click shop or go to stamp your, um, stampinup.com. When you're here, look, oh, there's a banner. You can click right now. Or you can choose um, menu, shop products, and choose online exclusives, just in case there's no banner at the top. That will bring you to this area. It lists the most recent stuff first. So if you want to, you can also sort by, let's just say, high to low. You can see, oh, there's the sweets. There's the flowering zinnia suite and the little latte suite. And all of the sweets, the pieces are sold separately. So you don't have to, you know, get, get the sweet to get the paper. All right. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I am going to be featuring another flowering zinnias card soon. Uh, really simple and easy. Another card that's beautiful, but super easy to put together. And that's coming up this week. And then I just want to mention the retiring colors again. If you are waiting for the uh, last chance list uh, sale, which starts April 9th, if you've heard about that, April 9th, the items that are retiring, not all of them, but a few of them are going to be on sale and some up to 60% off. That starts on April 9th. And um, again, those are products that are disappearing, not the new stuff, the stuff that's disappearing from the current annual and the current, um, what is it, January through April catalog, okay? So if you want to wait, you can, except some items sell out, and especially in color stuff. So if you're a fan of Parakeet Party or Orchid Oasis or whatever, you want to get your hands on that stuff sooner than later, okay? Make sure that you um, shop. 
right? And you don't have to shop from me if you're a demonstrator. Shop from yourself. If you have a demonstrator, show them some love. Otherwise, again, you can go to stampyourartout.com and click on shop. Let's do some prize drawing stuff. Last time, two weeks ago on our live, we had, um, we had, I'm trying to think of what we had. I don't remember. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I have it right here. We had some prizes. Um, and it, oh, it was a tutorial of your choice. So if you are somebody that, and I'm pulling up this stuff here. Hang on. I'm still here. I'm just down on my desk. Um, we had some people, one person who has not quite gotten back to me yet, I think. Tina Rogers, you're with me today, aren't you? Um, I don't think I heard back on which, or maybe you did tell me the tutorial you wanted. Email me anyways at stampyourartout.com, just, or I'm sorry, stampyourartout at comcast.net. I want to make sure you got your prize. We had other winners in the past. We had Rena Hurst, we had By Diane, um, and we had Jean Huffman, who got kits of choice. If your name was called, reach out to me so I can tell you what your prize options are as far as the kits of choice. Uh, Mimi Sanchez, haven't heard from you back yet. Online exclusive sampler and surprise product. And then there were um, Senior Scrapper and Donna Lathrop. I didn't hear from you yet. Uh, there were stamp sets that you could choose from. Today is bringing out designer paper again. We have designer paper and I'm going to throw in some new stuff. So um, the prize is designer paper, samplers from the past, but also a few new sheets in there too. So you'll want to make sure that you reach out to me. The people that um, are going to get prizes from uh, after comments, you had two weeks to do after comment, um, to leave an, a comment after the live was done. And surprisingly, we didn't have a lot of after live comments. I don't know what happened. Did we all go to on stage? <laughs> all right. So I am going to announce those winners on YouTube. The after live commenter was Margaret Burkett. So reach out to me, Margaret, at stampyourartout.comcast.net to pick your tutorial of choice. And the after live comment from YouTube was Kim Lurch. So congratulations to both of you. And now we're going to come back and see if Trisha has called out any winners. Okay, let's take a peek here and see. I don't think she's announced them yet. She tries to time it so that it's right after me. And we have this like I don't know how many seconds delayed, 30 seconds or something like that. So she's going to announce two prize winners from the YouTube Live that will get in on the paper prize. And I will highlight that, that announcement when it comes up. Um, I think that's it. So we have a live again next week. We're back on track with our pattern of every live every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Next week will be Wednesday, March 27th. Uh, still haven't seen it pop up yet, which is crazy because I know she's with us. I see her comments rolling through. I'm not seeing them, Trisha. That is so weird. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll get them up here before I, I sign off. Um, March 27th at 11 a.m. Central Time. And I don't know. I think I have the project plan. I can't remember now. Oh, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Paper Pumpkin, for those of you waiting for Paper Pumpkin exclusives, I literally just got back. They're going to be delayed this month. I haven't even dived into the kit. I will be able to do that this weekend. So my Paper Pumpkin will be a bit delayed. Um, yeah. Sorry. Trisha, are you with us? I think you are. I think you are. I'm not seeing the lives being, uh, or the winners being announced. Is she not with us today? Maybe Trisha is not with us today. Oh no, she's there. Oh, <laughs> okay. Those of you that are like, what's going on? Um, I don't know what happened, Trisha, but I wasn't seeing them. And now I see four in a row. So yay, congratulations to Judy Demp Dempton and Kathy um, Hostel Host Hostetler? Hostetler. Hostetler? Kathy Hostetler. I hope I said it right the second time. I think that's how you say it. And congratulations. Reach out to me again at e, my um, email address at stampyourartout at comcast.net. All right. Now, that's it. I think we're good, you guys. We can sign off. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, Trisha. 
<laughs> we'll have to talk after this. It was weird. It was like all of a sudden you disappeared. I don't know what happened. Um, take care, everyone, and we will see. You. Did any of you meet Trisha at on stage? She was there. So was Lisa. We were all walking around together. I hope you got pictures with them. They're they're like awesome. Okay, take care, everybody. We will see you next week on March 27th at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.